Can the Tab A7 Plus actually compete with the much more expensive iPad Mini 6, or are you just wasting money? In other words, you'd expect the iPad to come out ahead, but is it close enough to where you can save 300 bucks and still get most of what you need? As far as the size, these two tablets are quite similar. The A7 Lite is longer and slightly narrower than the iPad Mini 6, but both are small, light, and super comfortable to hold, use, and game on. So as far as portability, they're close enough to where I wouldn't give one the definitive edge over the other. Now before before I get to the display, let's talk about the design. So the iPad mini 6 has rounded corners, squared off edges, and even bezels all the way around. The Tab A7 Lite has rounded corners and a rounded edge on the back. It has thinner bezels on the side and then larger ones on the top and the bottom, just like the iPad mini 5 or the iPad 9. Now looking around the edges, the iPad mini 6 has power and volume up and down controls and then a USB-C port for charging and accessories. The Tab A7 Lite has the controls on the right. It has a USB-C port at the bottom. Then we have have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro SD card slot that can be used to expand the internal storage by up to one terabyte. One thing that bothers me about the Tab A7 Lite is that the headphone jack and the USB-C ports are not centered vertically on the side of the tablet. Now I'm sure it's intentional, but it looks like something that would be the outcome of a manufacturing defect. I'll get to the speakers and audio later on, but as far as the design, the iPad mini 6 has a much more premium look and feel, while the Tab A7 Lite has the edge if you're looking to expand the internal storage or use traditional headphones without an adapter. Now, as far as biometric authentication, the iPad mini 6 has Touch ID integrated into the power button, while the Tab A7 Lite has facial recognition using the front facing camera. Both have worked very well for me, so ultimately it's going to come down to how you use your tablet and what you prefer. And when we look at the displays, we start seeing some significant differences. So let me talk about the specs and then explain why they matter. So the Tab A7 Lite has an 8.0 seven inch display with a resolution of 1340 by 800, an aspect ratio of five by three, and a pixel density of 179 PPI. The iPad mini six has an 8.3 inch display with a much higher resolution of 2266 by 1488, an aspect ratio of three by two, and a significantly higher pixel density of 327. Now, the higher resolution of the iPad mini six means that we can see more content without having to scroll, and it's better suited for multitasking with two apps open side by side. The aspect ratio of the Tab A7 Lite coupled with the longer design means that you're getting a slightly larger image when you're viewing videos like this one, while the dramatically higher pixel density of the iPad mini 6 provides a sharper image. And in terms of color accuracy, I'm also going to give the edge to the iPad mini 6 P3 display. We're also getting a brighter display at 500 nits versus 360 on the Tab A7 Lite, so the iPad mini 6 performs better in brighter conditions. Now both are plenty good to watch content on, but if you have them side by side and you're watching the same thing, the iPad mini 6 image looks better. Now something else that I noticed immediately is that unlike the iPad mini 6, the Tab A7 Lite does not have a fingerprint resistant coating, so it immediately and constantly needs cleaning. Now both displays are 60 hertz displays, so there isn't a difference there, but in the ways that actually matter to me, the iPad mini 6 display is the clear winner. Moving on to the camera systems, the Tab A7 Lite has an 8 megapixel rear facing camera versus 12 megapixels on the iPad mini 6, which can also record video at a higher resolution and a higher frame rate for slow motion. Now looking at the front facing camera, the iPad mini 6 again has a 12 megapixel camera versus an extremely underwhelming 2 megapixel one on the Tab A7 Lite. Now the iPad mini 6 also has a feature called center stage that uses the ultra wide camera to track a subject as it moves through the frame and then zoom in and out to make it appear as if it's following it. While higher resolution isn't everything when it comes to photography and video, the iPad cameras are simply better. They have better dynamic range, they're sharper, and they're more color accurate. Now, personally, I rarely use the cameras on my tablets because the ones on my phone are usually better. But if you plan on using the cameras on your tablet, the iPad mini 6 wins this by a mile. And when it comes to audio, the iPad mini 6 has four speaker grills versus two on the Tab A7 Lite, but both tablets only have two speakers, one on each side. For their size, they both actually sound pretty good, but I'm gonna give the slight edge to the iPad mini 6, which has a bit fuller sound with less of that hollow quality that you sometimes get from smaller devices. On the other hand, the Tab A7 Lite does have a headphone jack, which works really well for headphones or for a gaming headset, which I'll get to in the gaming section. Now, as far as keyboards go, both tablets are too small to have a keyboard case that's comfortable to type on. So I would opt for a Bluetooth 
keyboard if you're interested in a better typing experience. As far as stylus, the iPad Mini 6 is compatible with the second generation Apple Pencil, while the Tab A7 Lite is not compatible with the Samsung S Pen. So if you wanna take handwritten notes, if you wanna draw, if you wanna sign and mark up documents or use the stylus for anything else, the iPad Mini 6 is the way to go. Now, let's talk about performance where I expected the iPad Mini 6 to come out ahead. For single core performance, we're looking at 1594 versus 158 on the Tab A7 Lite. And for multi-core performance, we're looking at 4604 versus 861. Now, sometimes when I compare devices, the delta or the difference in performance is small enough to where the conversation shifts to whether you need that additional performance and will you notice the difference. Now, a lot of times the answer is no, and the results of the benchmark test don't really reflect a meaningful difference, but you will notice the difference in virtually everything that you do, from opening apps, using multiple browser tabs, and then switching back and forth, changing settings, and just navigating around the UI. The MediaTek MT8768 on the Tab A7 Lite is simply underpowered for what most users need today. And if you're coming from even a decent phone, you will notice the lag. So this is an area where paying a lot more for the iPad Mini 6 actually gets you a lot more. Like apps open faster, switching between apps is responsive, wake from sleep is immediate, and then running multiple apps at the same time doesn't immediately slow down your device. Now looking at RAM, the Tab A7 Lite comes with three gigabytes if you get 32 gigs of internal storage or four gigabytes if you get 64 gigs like I did. Now regardless of whether you get 64 or 256 gigs of internal storage on the iPad Mini 6, you're getting four gigabytes of RAM. Now I talked a little about multitasking throughout the video, so while neither one of these would be my first choice because of their smaller size, the iPad Mini 6 is the better option with a higher resolution and the additional processing power. I can also use it as an additional display for my MacBook, Mac Mini, or iMac with Sidecar, which means that I can have a dual display setup, some higher end Samsung tablets like my Tab S7, S7 Plus, and S7 FE, just to name a few, have a similar feature called second screen, but I couldn't find that feature on my Tab A7 Lite. Now, as far as battery life, both tablets have decent battery life to where I can get through an entire day without needing a charge. Now, of course, if I sit down and start playing hours of PUBG, neither one of these are gonna last and they're both gonna need a charge. But if I'm just surfing the web, watching some video and then going on some social media sites, they'll both work just fine. Now, I'm going to get to gaming in just a minute, but I think it's really important to look at the available apps and the operating system support. The Google Play Store and the Apple App Store have tons of options, so you should be able to find apps that work with both of these for pretty much everything that you need. But keep in mind that the iPad Mini 6 is much more powerful. So if you plan on doing more resource intensive tasks, then it's the better option, or you can choose a more powerful Samsung tablet if you're okay with the larger form factor. Now some creative apps like Affinity Photo, Procreate, and LumaFusion are only available for the iPad, at least at this time. So if those are a requirement for you, again, the iPad is the better choice. Now LumaFusion did announce that they're working on an Android version, but again, I would suggest a more powerful tablet if you plan on doing video editing. Now, another important consideration is operating system support, where Samsung promises three generations of OS updates. Apple, on the other hand, has always been extremely good at supporting older devices, and iPad OS 15 is still compatible with my iPad Air 2, which I got in 2014. Now, when it comes to gaming, the iPad Mini 6 is one of my favorite devices to game on, and it smoothly runs every game that I play. I was technically able to play games like Asphalt 9 and PUBG on the Tab A7 Lite, but the experience wasn't the best. The games took longer to load, there was more lag and stuttering, and the graphics were significantly worse. For example, PUBG takes about 12 seconds until I'm ready to start on the iPad Mini 6, and about 45 seconds on the Tab A7 Lite. Now, that's only on the initial startup, so it's not really the end of the world, but I just wanted to put things in context. Now, another thing is that I like to play PUBG on smooth and then the highest frame rate that I can. On the iPad Mini 6, I can go all the way up to extreme. On the Tab A7 Lite, I can only go up to medium, which is noticeably choppy. So can I play it? Yes, but would this be something I would choose to play PUBG on? Probably not. When it comes to pairing an Xbox controller and using Xbox Game Pass, the Tab A7 Lite actually did quite well. I was able to play all the games that I can play on my iPad Mini 6 without a problem. So where does that leave us? If you're looking for a small and portable tablet to game on and you're playing more demanding games, I would definitely go with the iPad Mini 6. If you're playing more basic games or if you're just using your tablet as a display for Xbox Game Pass, then both of them will work really well. For this section, 
section, I'm going to be using the pricing from the Apple and Samsung stores because they're more standardized, but you can usually get better prices by using the links in the description. The Tab A7 Lite is available with either 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage, and it starts at 130 bucks. I chose to go with the 64 gig option because 32 just wouldn't be enough for me, but if you're just using it to stream video, surf the web, and then a few small games, then it could work. Now, I do wanna remind you that you can use the micro SD card slot to increase the internal storage on the Tab A7 Lite by up to an additional terabyte. The iPad mini 6 is available with 64 gigabytes for 499 or 256 for 649. So it's significantly more expensive and both are available in Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi plus cellular models. So ultimately, can you save a lot of money and get most of what you want? The answer depends on what you're looking for. Normally processing power is not a huge deciding factor for me because many of the newer tablets are more capable than what the average user needs. But in this case, if you want a small and portable tablet to watch content, surf the web, use various productivity apps, social media, light gaming, and even cloud-based gaming with Xbox Game Pass, the A7 Lite can work. For anything more than that, or if you're looking for long-term support, a better display, the ability to use a stylus, and a better camera and audio system, you'll want to look at the iPad Mini 6 or maybe a different tablet from Samsung. Now you should see how the Tab S7 compares to the Tab S7 Plus and the Tab S7 FE. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.